In the Southern Caribbean, just 50 miles off the coast of Venezuela, lies the Dutch island of Bonaire. Beneath the surface of its turquoise water, coral reefs cling to the coastline and are home to over 350 species of fish. But a recent four-year study here, concluded in 2020, has shown annual coral bleaching as high as 61%, a phenomenon that reveals signs of stress potentially deadly to the organisms. One of the big impacts of climate change is, of course, the oceans getting warmer. What we've seen in Bonaire over the last couple of years is a lot of bleaching that happens, but luckily not a lot of corals that died. Uh, but of course, if we keep having these really big, intense bleaching events and the corals do not get the time to recover, that can really change what your reef looks like. In 1979, the waters around the island were given special protection as one of the planet's first marine reserves. Since then, the ban on fishing in the reserve, plus the prohibition of anchoring and any removal of coral, is monitored and regulated by the Stanapa Park Foundation. Today, the reef maintains its status as one of the healthiest in the Caribbean. Today we are doing checks on some light and temperature sensors we have located in the park. So with these sensors we can get an idea of how the temperature is changing through the years. Is this temperature change the same in all of the marine park? Is it the same on all depths? And this can really help us in the future if we're planning on doing restoration by targeting which coral species survive best in which temperature ranges, which areas would do best for restorations. And the better we understand that, the better we can protect and conserve what we have. For the past 10 years, local organization Reef Renewal Bonaire has been using that valuable information to implement a process of natural coral recovery called fragmentation. We propagate thousands and thousands of corals in our nursery, just cutting them, like sort of gardening underwater. So let's say you have a coral and we call it the parent colony. You can cut a portion of it and this fragment is able to heal first, the scar, and then start growing. So the new corals, Groma will be a clone of the parent colony. In this way, cutting, uh, we're able to produce an old plant back to the reef, almost 10,000 corals per year. Most of the restoration is focused on two species of branching coral, staghorn and elkhorn, both critically endangered and both crucial as shelter for the marine life in the reef. When the project started, we sampled all around the island almost 50 different strains of these two species. We need to find corals that are more resistant. They are more resilient. To see the spawning of corals that you grew since they were little fragments and you spent a couple of years, you know, first in the nursery and then all planting them and monitoring them over the years and see them spawning, it's very rewarding. It means that uh, what you're doing is really making the difference. I'm still very optimistic about the future of Bonaire's reefs. We need to decide what we want the future to look like and then we need to take the steps to make sure that we can safeguard that future. I think we are at the point where we can make those decisions that will make sure that in 20 years Bonaire is maybe one of the only places that can stay while we still have a very nice, beautiful reef left. This is a planet worth protecting. Tell us how you're answering the call with the hashtag call to earth.